you know how some enterprise applications are able to track performance and bugs without debugging due to having logs in logs of metrics that kind of connect all the dots? Well, we're gonna be doing that in this video using something called Open Telemetry. In this video, we're gonna talk about three separate things. One, what is Open Telemetry? Two, why you should care about Open Telemetry? And three, a full code example of setting up Open Telemetry in your Python application. If you're new to the channel, I'm Eric Roby, a software engineer with over a decade of experience, and I've helped thousands of developers learn and grow within their craft. So to start, I'm gonna stop right here and admit, I have a really hard time pronouncing the word telemetry. I had to keep saying telemetry like over and over again to get ready for this video. For some reason, I keep saying it, telemetry. I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna be saying telemetry um, <laughs> often in the coding section, but bear with me, I, it's called open telemetry. All right, so open telemetry is an open source framework that tracks telemetry data like traces, metrics, and logs for your application. Open telemetry requires very little setup to get started Started collecting all kinds of data within your application. In a nutshell, it answers the critical questions of an application like where did a request fail? Or how long did a specific operation take to complete? Or even like what service in my entire application is slowing down? It answers a lot of questions pretty automatically, if you ask me. So let's talk about why you should care about open telemetry. The main reason is that it provides distributed tracing, which helps you identify points of failure in real time. Now, that's just like a fancy way of saying that it's keeping metrics behind scenes. Open telemetry has built in performance monitoring that can make your life easy when implementing because you don't really have to do much. This performance monitoring is a really big pro. And another big pro is that open telemetry can be used with a bunch of different programming languages and frameworks. In this video, we're gonna be using Python and FastAPI, but if you come from a different background of programming languages and frameworks, you can use it with just about any tool or combination of tools because it comes with so many different SDKs. But outside that, let's dive into code so we can kind of see how we can do performance monitoring and telemetry inside your code. All right, so already we have a simple fast API application running with one endpoint called roll dice. What we're doing is we're kind of doing like a little bit of like Yahtzee where you have to roll five dice three different times. And this is what this dice roll is holding. And then we loop through the count off of each endpoint and we return five dice three separate times. And then we return that back to the user and it's all random between one and six because that's what dice have on their faces. So if we wanted to go ahead and just kind of see what this looks like, if we run the application, we can see that we get five, one, one, six, two, three, three, one, two, one, two, three, two, four, six. So it's like you have five dice and you roll five dice three separate times. And each time you roll, it's gonna just give you five unique dice three separate times. So what we can see here is immediately we have our endpoints getting ran and they're all getting ran successfully. Now to be able to implement open telemetry into this, it's fairly simple. So the very first thing that we need to do is go ahead and install open telemetry's distribution. And we can do that by saying pip install open telemetry distro. This will install the API, the SDK, and something called Bootstrap and Instrument. And once we install that, we need to implement the Bootstrap. So we can say open telemetry dash bootstrap dash a install. This will download a bunch of different dependencies for a bunch of different libraries and frameworks like SQLite, Tortoise ORM, a whole bunch of different stuff. And one of the things that it's installing is Fast API's instrument. So now we can go ahead and just keep running that Uvicorn main colon app dash dash reload. And that'll keep running the application, but it won't kick off the open telemetry that we just installed. And to do this, we need to run something different. And I'm just gonna paste it in here because it's a little bit easier if I just paste it in. But what we can see is that we need to say export OTEL Python logging auto instrumentation enabled equals true. When you make this true, it's going to print all of the logging and tracing and everything inside our console. And then we can say open telemetry's instrument is going to enable tracing metrics logs and our service name is going to be our dice service. And then at the very end, we need to say Uvicorn main colon app, which is the way to kick off our application. Now I'll have all of these in um, the code given to you in um, the description below. But one thing you need to notice is that there is no dash dash reload load right here. 
And that's because the reload will interfere with the open telemetry. So we want to make sure that is not there. Now, when we go ahead and we click enter, we can see the application is up and running. If we come back over here and we refresh, which will just kick off the API endpoint again, and then we come back, we can see that it took a second to load, but we got all of the data from our application. We can see that the name is git slash roll dice, which is the endpoint that we just called. We did a send. There's a bunch of different contacts and IDs. There's a start time and the end time and the parent ID to be able to find this exact piece of telemetry data. There's resources about what it is. We're using Python is telling us that, hey, this was based on the dice server, which was like the name that we gave it in the open telemetry command. And there's just so much data inside here, and it's kind of logging and saving and doing a bunch of stuff for us. So if your application breaks or you have this connected to some kind of metric data, you don't have to go in through the code and debug it, even though that is good, but this might be a little bit easier way to be able to find the problem because in here, it could tell you exactly where something broke. All right, and now this is kind of like hard to see, right? We're doing it all through this console. What we can do is we can implement a UI that'll allow us to be able to see all of this data easier. It'll be able to say, hey, this request, you can see all the information for that request. There's a graph about when it was called, the duration of the request, all that kind of information. And we're gonna be using something called Jager to be able to do this. And it's extremely popular UI for being able to get telemetry data. So to be able to do that, we need to kick off a, docker command and that's because jager is like its own thing it's not like an import into our application it's like its own running application that we can then feed data into so i don't know if you have docker yet installed you got to make sure you go install docker and then once you have a in docker installed you can just come up here and we can just paste in docker run dash dash rm slash e and then we can pass in this command which all these different ports and then it'll install jager tracing all in one one at the latest image. So if we click that, we can see that it's going to be able to find the image on your local machine, but then it's going to be able to pull it from the Docker repository and install everything. All right. So once everything is installed, you can go back into your browser and at your local host port 16686 slash search, this is where your Jager UI is going to be. If you open up the service, there's not going to be anything yet. And that's because we need to configure it now with our fast API application. So to do this, we need to go back. So I have two terminals open, right? One's running Docker and the other one is our terminal for our fast API application. We need to come in here and we need to say pip install open telemetry exporter OTLP proto gRPC. Now an exporter is where you're going to be exporting the data. So we're going to be exporting it into our Jager UI. So once you do that, it's going to install everything you need to be able to get that going. And then from here, we need to do just a different command than before. We just want to say open telemetry dash instrument dash dash service name roll dot dice uvicorn main app. And what we're doing here is this roll dice is going to be like the service name inside Jager. And it'll kind of make sense once we get to it. But our open telemetry instrument service name roll dice uvicorn main colon app. Now, when you click enter here, we are connected to Jager just like that. So if we go back into our code, we can see if we refresh this, there is this thing called Jager all in one that is by default comes automatically with Jager, but it's not our service. What we want to do is refresh this three times. And now if you come in here and we refresh Jager, we can see that there's going to be something called roll.dice. This is our metrics for our API endpoint. If you click it and you say find all traces, we can see all three of the traces that we just implemented into the application. And what we can do here is when you click on one, we can see the duration that it took, the start time, and then it's going to have a bunch of different information. So it's going to have the tag, it returned a status 200, and we can just kind of look through this and be like, hey, everything looks good. However, we can only see like the overview of what's happening right here, right? We can't see like what's happening in the application. We're only seeing the high level view of the endpoint of slash roll dice and the response that is 200. We're not being able to see any of the other data that we might want to be able to see if we're going to be going through this. So 
what we want to do here is we want to implement something called spanning. And how we can do this is at the very top, we now need to implement our trace and our open telemetry to be able to implement extreme metrics inside our application. So we can say from open telemetry, import trace. And now we need to acquire our tracer, which is going to be dice roller dot tracer. So we can say tracer equals trace dot get tracer dice roller tracer. And then we want to scroll all the way to the bottom where we create this random integer of one to six. What I'm going to say here is I'm just going to re delete this return statement real quick. And we want to say right here with tracer dot start as current span span name as span. All right, so what the heck is this doing? Well, this creates a new span that's a child of the current one. And this means like a span of metrics. So we have our metrics and we're able to now be able to say, hey, we also want to capture metrics inside here and be able to trace this data back to our Jager UI. So what we can say here is the, and then one thing is it's allowing us to be able to dynamically be able to organize our data. So we'll have the parent ID of the role is going to be the same span ID as the ID for the role dice. And that just kind of creates a, pile, a parent child relationship between the API endpoint and the data. But what we can say here now is right here, I'm going to move this up a line. We can say results. Results equals this. And then we want to set our set attribute. So we can say our, so now that we have our result, which is going to be this, let's go back up here and look at what we're doing. So we have our tracer start as current span, and then we have our span name as span. We can change this stuff. So I'm going to change this to role. And then I'm going to call this role span just so we have a little bit better understanding of what's going on here. And now we can say our role span dot set attribute to our role value of our result. And then we can just return our result. So now if we come back into our application and we kick this off and I'm going to separate this by saying um, roll dice two. that's just so we have a different service name in our UI. Oops, up here, I said tracker instead of tracer. Sorry, so that needs to be get tracer of this. All right, let's go and do it again. Our application has started. If we now go back into our UI, I'm going to do this three more times and we refresh this. I'm going to go back. We can see that we have our roll dice. If I refresh this, we can see that we now have our roll dice too. That's because I named the service a second thing. But now if we say find traces and we go inside, we can see a lot more data already. We have the, this roll trace where it's going to give us a bunch more information where our roll value each time. So if we're looking through this, we can see our roll value because we're capturing the value of the result right here. So right here, we're capturing the result and we're naming it role value inside our span. So when we're inside here, we can see that the role value inside this span is going to be two. And so we're able to capture each item inside now for our role. So even if we go back, we can see all three of our endpoints in the duration it took. But now we can get even more information inside. Now, this is extremely powerful tool because now we have durations, we are getting dates, we're getting stamps, we're having, hey, what's the value here? What's the value here? We could technically be logging and capturing errors and doing a whole bunch of stuff inside here that'll allow us to really, really be able to do awesome, cool things. Like if our application breaks, it doesn't make a developer to find out where it is. We're getting all the telemetry data and we're storing it. So I hope this was an awesome intro to how you can implement open telemetry into your Python application. And I will see you in the next video.